The following is a presentation of TFNN. The Tiger Technician Hour with your host, Basil Chapman. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Chapman. Good morning, everyone. On this Wednesday, the 8th of May, we're looking at the Dow Down 12 at 38,871 Tiger Technicians Hour. And we're looking at this Chapman Wave Inside Wedge gr Dash Green Diagonal Resistance Repellent Line acting exactly what it should do, just hugging the price or the price is hugging the line. Not really pulling back, not really breaking out, but just walking this line. That's really good. And that just suggests that there is a good chance <clears throat> that this resistance area in the 39,000, uh, and we're at 38,873 right now, could be tested later this week. <clears throat> and if it does that, in fact, if by Friday, it doesn't matter if we close there, but if by Friday we've hit 39,130 up in that area, that really helps the weekly chart, and that's going to be very important because as we're looking at it right now, all the technicals are good. Look, the nine-period moving average is way over the 14th. The MACD is strong. The relative strength, this gray line here, is uh, making higher highs and higher lows. The on-balance volume right there is uh, not yet overbought. It's doing very nicely. <clears throat> And the stochastics at 90%. More, what, what, what more could you want? 90% is really good if you are uh, looking at this in a buy mode, and that's exactly where it is. Let's go to the S&P, see if there's the same relationship there. I am expecting some kind of a digestive session today. We had one yesterday and a little bit of a follow-through today, although they were higher highs. So follow-through today to um, just not do very much, but just kind of take a breather. That's really what I'm anticipating. S&P is down 951 at 5178. Uh, this is kind of important because here again, 9 is over the 14. Retro strength is good. MACD is expanding. Uh, stochastics at 91%. The on-balance volume is lagging quite a bit, but it is rallying, and that's good. And that weekly chart, look at that. Still very good action in the weekly chart. Q, Q, Q. Here we go. Uh, trading uh, down 74 cents at 439.62. So here, <clears throat> there is no difference to the others. The only difference is that we've got uh, these two lines here, these declining um, parallel lines. This is the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Now look how it's worked as a repellent zone for so long. This is where it started right there back in April. Then you had uh, lower, lower highs, and each one got repelled at that green line just above the pink line. Uh, inside track repellent zone pulled back very sharply, went all the way down to the 412 area, and then rallied very sharply to yesterday's high, and that was in the 440, was it 441? Yeah, 441.97, and it's pulled back today. The low is 437.55. But look at this, testing that pink line again. So I, I, I looking at this, and usually when you've done a really quick and sharp pick A to B to C. C takes maybe a little time to get going before it gets to a D, so we're watching this very closely. There is a one-to-one. -one. Um, this is Chapman Wave falling axe formation as well, <clears throat> as the A to B equals C to D lightning bolt pattern, and that went just a tad above that extension. If it goes a little higher, I can start to move this line up a little bit. I go one step at a time. The weekly chart's still strong. Now, this is going to be the... This is going to be the index that gives the major clues about the, the coming, I'd say two months maybe, four, four to six weeks, maybe even two months. And that is if the IWM, the Russell 2000, which is a little sharper down, it was, it was on a percentage basis, it was the leader for a couple of days. Today it's the leader on the downside, down 0.83%, down $1.71 at 2 or 3.28. And look at this, um, it's taken back a couple of days worth of gains. So we're getting, it's going to be much harder now for it to get to a um, penny above yesterday's high of 204.78 to get to 204.79 to start a leg D. And it really needs to do that starting very soon. It's to fill the gap. That's going to take a little bit and then to move higher. So uh, with that said, uh, there is... 
Yeah, the nine is over the 14. The MACD has got a very wide uh, distance between the uh, histogram. That's that's a positive. The uh, relative strength index is rallying nicely. The stochastics at 90%. That's fabulous. And the on-balance volume is still very good. So nothing here says that this is weakening other than price. And I respect price because price is the arbiter of a trend. So to get this trend back it's, so far, it's still making higher highs and higher lows. But to get it kind of to the acceleration mode, and I just don't know if this is going to do it in the coming week of action. I, I was I was looking forward to seeing uh, the Russell 2000 small caps, the 2000 small caps start to join the 1000 small caps because that's been on a tear. It's a much, not on a short term basis, but on a more intermediate term basis. It made an all time high just uh, two and a half months ago. That uh, the IWM didn't. So we're seeing if there's follow through. And let me put this here as an up arrow, it's in a buy mode. Look at the lagging on balance volume here. But we've got peak A, peak B, and if there's no new high today, peak C. So what do we have here? We have the same sort of thing as we had in the QQQs. This is the iShares Russell 1000 ETF. Symbol is IWB trading at 283.67, down 61 cents. Look at this. You take the previous highs. And you start to see a pattern that I call the falling axis. It's really a declining, expanding cone formation. And making lower highs and much lower lows. And then all of a sudden, it finds a little bit of a base. Let me see if I can find the chart right here to show you. Uh, there it is. There we go. Um, usually at a D, E, or F, it starts to make lower lows and then a much lower Lower highs are much lower lows, then finds a base, makes a cup formation or a V-shaped formation, and breaks that resistance level, the upper trend line, declining trend line. That's where we are. But I also like to do this because it's such a clear formation. You do that, and you draw another one, change that to red. I usually make it pink so you can see the differentiation between red and pink because the candles have red if they are weak. And this is green right there. Okay, yeah, we are in the Chapman Wave inside track repellent zone. Look at the Q, look at this left side chart. That's the daily chart of the IWB Russell 1000 ETF. Look at this. Doesn't look very much like the Q, Invesco QQQ Trust series. This is the NDX 100. But wait a minute. This is the IWM, the 2000. How can there be does such a difference? Oops. IWM, what's that? This is the iShares 2000. Um, is that value? Oh, this is the value. Okay, I don't want to get confused here. IWM. IWM, there it is. So here's the chart that we're looking at. Um, it, it's got a lot of work to start to show that it's got leadership capabilities. It was showing it. The pullback today is deeper than I would have liked. Doesn't matter. I should mention that you are long or blow it down, but we're going to see what happens over a period of the next what I'd say 24 hours now about 36 hours the next 36 hours I think is going to be very important I'll be right back Basil Chapman Dow's down 1 s down 10 thank you If you're looking for potential trading setups in the stock market, then Rocket Equities and Options Report is a newsletter you should try. Tommy O'Brien delivers options and equity trades when the markets present them using a combination of fundamentals and technicals. Sign up for Rocket Equities and Options Report today with a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. For all the details and to start your subscription today, visit the front page of TFNN.com. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento, a pro's pro with over 50 years of experience. Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. 
published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the Newsletters tab. The Gold Report as a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly gold report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. TFNN has launched the Tiger's Den, hosted at Discord. TFNN has been educating traders for more than 20 years with live programming hosted by a variety of professional traders during market hours. The Tiger's Den, available to all tigers and tigresses for just $1 for the year. There's no catch or added costs when you join our community of traders. Sign up today and become a part of this educational community of traders. Just visit the front page of TFNN.com. Call now, toll free at 1-877-927-6648. Internationally at 727-873-7618. Uh, yeah, thank you for that, Jeff, and the uh, Tiger YouTube. Teva, once upon a time, you used to have Teva on our list. And, and we even had a trade on Teva Pharmaceuticals way back when it was in the single digits. Haven't even looked at it for ages. And Jeff says, Teva is back. Uh, so Teva had a big spike to the upside, up 11% at 1.57. It's trading at 15.53. I can't believe how many of these micro, well, it's not so micro, it's a Teva Pharmaceuticals Industries ADR, but uh, I can't believe how many uh, of the micro uh, biotechs have just had extremely good runs lately. We're looking at Teva trading at 15.57, up $1.63, up 11.6%. With a gap up, I don't know if that's earnings or if it's some kind of news. But in the meantime, back at the ranch, um, yes, this would I would being uh, in the farmer area, or I'm not sure if it's just biopharma or farm itself. Um, there is a difference in the charts. I just want you to check. I, I did this very quickly, and I think I made a mistake here. That was 14.45, and I think that's high. Yes, there it is. I just had to do this very quickly because I did it during the break. So this is the C and a D of the Chapman Wave restart. So it's C and a D in the weekly. And now this is either any, I'm calling it an E for now. No need to change the lettering. That was an instant restart. This is a perfect example of a Chapman Wave instant restart technique I developed way, way, way back. Uh, soon after, I discovered what I called initially the Chapman Wave 7 wave form. Um, and then I found that the 7 wave, when you had another higher high to go to that leg nine, <clears throat> that in fact could continue for another four peaks higher. That's how I got the instant restart, then I've got the uh, flat base restart, then I've got the unconventional flat base restart, all essentially going around this particular instrument where it says, uh, a technical tool, if you make a high, a leg D, then you pull back within three bars. If you make another high, you have an alternate count, E slash A, then F, because it can go all the way. It's so powerful sometimes that it can go all the way to another four peaks. Now, it's very hard to say. Look, the monthly chart is fabulous. Next C, it was down in the sixes uh, a couple of times, uh, especially back in 2022. And here it is at 15. Now, that's not a big deal for a farmer to, to make a double. It should be up in the triple or, or quadruple area if this is really a a very strong farmer. Um, and I'm just thinking that this is 
Look at the way it's walking the nine, the 14 period moving average here, which it's really walking the nine. And then just the last four weeks, it's hit the um, 14 period moving average twice and it's just broken out above it. This is really positive action. I don't know what they do, I don't know what they're doing. And all I can say is if you look at it historically, well, first of all, the support will be the 14s and it's trading right now at 1557. Historically, oh, I remember this so well. Um, that was the low back there. So it went to peak A, B, and then pulled back and made another A, B, pulls back A, B, finally goes uh, C, D, A, B. Yeah, so there it is. It makes it all time high back in July of 2015 at 72.31. Yeah, it's a bit of a pull. I would say it's a bit of a pullback to come down to the uh, $6.07 level. Back in August of 2019, it's been struggling ever since, but now it's starting to make higher highs and higher lows in the monthly chart. This is this is looking very good. I don't know what their product is. I, I could look it up. I don't want to do that right now. I think to say I am going to put a little, put a work in this because it fits in the category of the ones that have had huge bases. And look at that base that goes really from the 11 and a half area down to the sevens. Let's say. And now it's breaking out to the upside. And I want to see, is is this really the start of something? Was this one of those big spikes that gives back a chunk? All I can say is that if in a week's time, you would give it at least three to five trading days. If it touches 16 in between now and Wednesday a week, that's really positive action. If it closes any day, actually, I'm not going to say close. If it even takes out 14.50 intraday. Um, that's his, uh-oh, uh, the news is out. Now it's going to have to rebuild support. But so far, Teva's looking very good. Um, Dan in the Den says, Basil, on that micro bio note, see my little future gem, CVM? Mm, CVM, CV. And this one showed up in my screamer list some time ago, and then it disappeared. <clears throat> oh, look at that. Uh, up 45 cents, up 27 percent at two dollars and 12 cents. Yeah, folks, if you if you do this, you really need to do quite a bit of homework. You can't just take them because <clears throat> look how long they can last to the downside. Look at this. This is CVM is SCI. Oh, this is CEI. S -A Science Corporation. Oh, I remember this has got a funny dual name. Um, yeah. Look at what happens when it fails. It goes up to the almost three level, and then it takes weeks, weeks. It takes almost a couple of months, and it comes down to a dollar. And then all of a sudden, it's trading at $3. So you've got to be real careful with this. I'd say do a little homework, find out what's going on, and then if you put in a, in a, in a buy, uh, use some discretion. In other words, have it probably discretionary money, money that you don't need right away because sometimes it takes a while before they kick in. Now, I wanted to just go back to this because it's so important. How the market closes today uh, will be uh, quite quite important. Look, the, the one-minute chart, I was so busy here. I, I got out earlier on, got in nicely over there, got out, and then I just had to watch it. I'm saying, watch that 200 p moving average, 200 p moving while I'm on the show. I didn't even see this peak A, peak B, new leg C to the upside, in the one-minute chart, and on new leg E, my target had been the five-minute 200-period moving average of 2208. And what did it do? It just hit that right now, and it's trading at 5207 in leg E. And what's important, and I was thinking to myself when I got into that position, I thought, you know, should you make that a two-click session? There are all the symptoms and signs that say, this is a possible two-click session today. Why do I say that? Because I, I felt so kind of determined to look for some kind of a consolidation. When your mind locks in like that, you you don't let the sunlight in. And I had to let the sunlight in. That's why I got in. And then I said, oh, no, I'm sure it's going to pull back. Well, it did. Now look at it. And what happens is that entry point right there in the <laughs> – isn't that nice? Um, in the – 10-minute chart right down here for the first time the 10-minute the chart since it went negative at about 6 o'clock this morning 
has gone positive in the nine period at nine fourteen. Is this going to be a two click session? Well, we'll see. Um, yeah, could very well be. We'll see. It's new leg B. Does it still go to a D? Well, most importantly, the ten minute E mini has to last and hold above. I would say fifty one ninety eight. If it starts to trade under that, it says nah. Now you're giving back a lot. It's at fifty two oh nine right now. Very nice. Got us on your leg D in the uh, one minute chart. All right, back to our story. <laughs> okay, this is what I want you to do. I want you to go through the gold. Here's the gold trading just down a little bit. Actually, now it's unchanged at uh, 2324. What is the speed when it goes under the night moving average, which is telling you that it is starting to see some technical deterioration? What does that tell you? And I'm going to talk about that when I get back. We're making a little educational session today. The um, uh, silver is above the nine period moving average, but that nine is still pink. We'll have to talk about that when I return. Dow's up 31, SB is down three. We'll be right back. If you spend any time online researching trading techniques on how to begin your trading journey, you've no doubt come across many folks who push Forex trading as a way to make big money quickly. Unfortunately, there are equally as many stories of these so-called Forex professionals just looking to make a quick buck off aspiring traders without actually teaching the ins and outs of the Forex market. This is what sets Teddy Kekstack's The Tiger Forex Report off the riffraff. Every Monday, former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member and author Teddy Kekstad releases his Tiger Forex Report newsletter, where he dives into the complex world of Forex and takes time to actually teach you his methods that have made him so successful in the fast-paced and rewarding world of Forex trading. Furthermore, all subscribers receive access to archived live streams of Teddy's, where he provides university-level education to help you in Forex trading. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Forex awaits. Many trading newsletters attempt to focus on a narrow set of equities or commodities. While this works for some, it oftentimes misses many opportunities that possess huge gain potential. But how is an independent trader supposed to scan the entire market looking for these hidden opportunities? One simple answer, the opening call newsletter. Basil Chapman, developer of the Chapman Wave trading methodology, has been trading the markets for longer than most trading influencers have been alive. And over that time, he has honed his methodology in order to accurately call movements in a wide range of equities, from semiconductors to uranium to key indices and so much more. Basil is old school, taking the time to educate the trader while also giving his insights into key indices, selective stocks, and more. Opening call subscribers also receive access to dozens of educational live streams that can be accessed at any time for your edification. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So ignore the pop trading influencers and start learning time-tested technical analysis. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. This portion of the Tiger Technician's Hour is brought to you by Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the direction. Visit Direction.com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. 
Right, folks, the question of the 10 was, time for me to can you please check FFIV? Oh, did I type something in there? Hang on. Is that F5, FFIV? Yes, it is. FFIV trading at 169.93, up $1.61. Had a huge gap down just over a week ago, tootling along in the 180s. Bam, the next thing you know, it's in the 160s, goes all the way down to 159s, and it's trading right now at 169.93. So this is a fascinating um, chart. Now, let me just look at this for a second. I want to show you something. <clears throat> After a gap down, I look at uh, different patterns. I remember Dave White used to call it uh, a, th a three-session wait. And um, I, I, that's one of the techniques that I use. Just give it a little time. It doesn't have to be three sessions. I want to see, does it trade within the rectangle of the big candle of the gap down? Does it close? Uh, does it go above and close above? Does it go above and fail? Does it go below and fail? Just a whole bunch of things. I don't want to, maybe, maybe if someone reminds me, maybe Technical Friday, I'll go into gaps. And, and I'll put F, F. No, I won't be here Friday. So I'm not sure. I, I just don't know if I'm going to be able to do the show on Friday. So um, in the meantime, I'll do it maybe even tomorrow. But basically, I'll talk about in the next couple of sessions, I'll talk about my theory with with gaps. But most importantly, when you look back, there are stocks that gap down, and you don't know they've gapped down because they've not only filled the gap, they've bypassed it. And I always say that if it starts to trade well above the gap, the, the highs that were made before the gap down, and it's back in that area, it means whatever the gap was, it was a case of mistaken identity. Someone took took a real took news and just turned it into the most horrible news but actually it had it had already begun to um, rectify all the wrongs that were there that made it gap down all right this is starting to do something like that but remember this is almost like uh, the pattern that I look at at the top when I draw the rectangle in uh, at a top and then I draw either a cup or an arch formation this one's gone back to the gap highs. It made a fractional new high. That's a gray A, not yet a blue, but I'll make it gray right there. And now it's testing it. So now what we've got is at on the on the uh, 30th of April, the high is 170.00, round number high, plunges down to the 159.01 level and closes at 165.31. Not bad, not a bad close. The next day, it makes a fractional new high. It goes over the 170.00. It goes to 170.25. Well, today's high is 170.16. If today it goes to 170.7, 126, 170.26, that's also great leg B. And it says, wow, I'm, I'm, I'm starting to fill whatever that gap was to the downside. I'm repairing the damage very steadily, very, very well. And that says that the nine period moving average of 170 point, uh, I, I must get the exact figure. It looks like an O, but it's not. 170.93 would be the next resistance to tag. If it can hit that and then close above it, then you've got the 200 period and the 14 period of 173.41 that you can contend with. That becomes a magnet if. Um, F5 Inc., this is fraud prevention, prevention security, etc., is able to get into the 172.30 area. Oh, I'm going to give it a, a full five, six sessions. If it can get there steadily without any day closing under 165, it doesn't sound like, uh, it sounds like a lot, but it, it can do that because it's had such a big gap. If it does that, that's, that's very negative. But most importantly, 165.13 is the 200 period weekly magnet line. It's gone below and it's closed above. And this week it's had all the price movement for three sessions now so far above that. I like what I'm seeing. So I, I know, Steve, that you try every once and again. You're not afraid to, to, to get these really sharp cascades to the downside and start a position. And I know that you also put in stops. I don't know whether you've got anything yet. Yes, yes, this was, I recall, was a big play in the go-go days of the dot-com. Um, it was back in the sevens and eights, correct. But most importantly, 
um, whatever it did the other day, look, what was it? Um, um, PANW, I think, PANW, also in the security uh, uh, area, Palo Alto Networks. Remember, look at that gap. And it did something very different. This one had the gap. If I can get the mouse to move, there it is. Had that big gap with an arch formation, failed, took out the left side low, and then went even lower. And where did it go to? It went to a 265 round number low when the day it made its all-time high of 380.88. It also did a 369 round number low. And look what happened. It tumbled to 260 with a 265 round number uh, a close, I think it was a close, on the around about the 20th of Feb, and it spiked all the way to the 320s. See how it filled the gap halfway, and then it couldn't continue, and it came down, but it hasn't made a lower low. It tested the 265 round number low was above the, oh, two, yeah, it was above that close, the 260.04. So I'm saying, don't be afraid of gaps if the market itself says, mm, that might have been a little bit of a mistake. So F-I-V-E, F-I-V-F. Come on, mister. What is the matter with you? F-F-I-V. There we go. F-F-I-V. Yeah, I'm saying this is working very nicely. It's working very hard. In fact, even now, it's trying to try, try to get to that high of just five sessions ago, uh, 170.25, I said it had to get to. Well, that's that's the candle. I like it as an attempt to trade something that has the potential to rectify a wrong. If it's going to do that, that 165 area mustn't be taken out. That's all I'm saying. But at this particular point, if you are steadily in it, um, I would put a stop in and make it a trading stop. Uh, um, thanks, Basil. FFIV, partner in crime in dot com. Yes, was take two, T T W O E. Where's that trading right now? Uh, this is a, a, a nice bounce of the 200 period moving average. It's not as, I would say, it's not as exciting a chart pattern as the one you're looking at because this has the potential over a six week period just to steadily move higher. It has the potential. That doesn't mean to say it can do that. All righty. Uh, next question came in. Now, can I find it or I just cover it up with a, a chart? I'll right, get rid of that chart. Let's look and see. Um, Under Armour. Under Armour. Oh, I had to put that for a little while. So there's UA and there's UAA or something like that. UA is Under Armour. Uh, yeah, they also have a cap that is pulled very nicely. This is a different pattern. This is with the dreaded H that goes to a lowercase M. It's a trading 652 down for X. I wouldn't touch this. I'll be back now that we're going to get S&P down 4,000. The Gold Report. As a precious metal, gold is still king. It continues to hold the most effective safe haven and hedging properties across the global major trading hubs of the London OTC market, the U.S. futures market, and the Shanghai Gold Exchange. The Gold Report. Tom O'Brien publishes his weekly Gold Report every Monday morning for subscribers, consisting of coverage of the XAU, HUI, GDX, the dollar, bonds, the South African Rand, as well as 25 different mining equities with specific buy-sell recommendations. The Gold Report. New subscribers get a 30-day money-back guarantee so you have nothing to risk. Subscribe to Tom O'Brien's Gold Report newsletter now at TFNN.com. The stock market is a delicate interconnecting web of commodities, equities, and trader psychology. When one string of the web is pulled, it has a ripple effect across the broader market. This is where opportunity lies. But how are you to gather all of this information into one cohesive model when you're already spending your energy looking for any possible trade opportunities? Luckily, you don't have to worry about that, as Tom O'Brien has brought all important market news to you in one single newsletter, Market Insights. Market Insights provides a daily overview of what's happening in the indexes, bonds, gold, and more. Follow along with Tom daily as he analyzes the components that affect the overall movement of the stock market, giving insight into how each one plays either a bullish or bearish role. 
Tom also analyzes specific equities that he believes has the potential to make huge returns, and his track record proves his analysis right. All first-time subscribers receive a 30-day money-back guarantee. So what are you waiting for? Don't let the market leave you in the dust. For traders who crave risk, Direction's daily leveraged and inverse ETFs provide opportunities to magnify short-term perspectives with up to three times the daily leverage, utilize bull and bear funds from both sides of the trade, and trade through rapidly changing markets. These are highly leveraged ETFs with daily resetting designed for short-term trading, not long-term investing. Whether you're a bull or a bear, you choose the Direction. For up-to-date pricing and performance, go to Direction. Com. Investing in the funds involves significant risk and should only be utilized by investors who understand the impact of leverage and actively monitor their portfolio. They are not designed to track the underlying index or security for more than a day. Before investing, carefully consider a fund's investment objective, risk, charges, and expenses contained in the prospectus available at Direction.com. Read carefully. Distributor Foresight Fund Services, LLC. This program is brought to you by Vista Gold, traded on the NYSE American and TSX under the symbol VGZ. I say in the, uh, in the tag YouTube, uh, Jeff says, Tampa Farmers is a uh, um, generic drug. Okay, good to know. And then he has another one. Oh, busy day there, huh? KD. KD is, I don't think I can read. It's a little faint. KD is uh, kin Kindly Holding, Kindle, Kindle Holdings. Big move up, 23, up 20, opens at 23 round number uh, at 2525 right now, 4.48, up 21% down. It was in the 20 area, 21 area yesterday. Boom. Uh, very nice. All right. Well, you've got these sudden spikes up. It's what happens next. Oh, I wanted to show you something. So you remember we were looking at the whatever stock that was a moment ago. Um, we were looking to see what it can do. And I said that it could start to move higher. And I said there's a pattern on the upside. Here's the upside. So Tesla has the same thing. Look, there's the rectangle. And there's the support. It makes a dreaded H and it plunges and takes it out. And now it's full the gap. So good grief. Am I going to remember what that stock was that we were looking at? Uh, oh, too far away. Oh, F5. All right. There it is, F5. Um, that, and there it is. So that looks like the upside down of Tesla. And this says it could work its way. There it is. It's starting to leg B right now. Good. So this is uh, interesting only because your, your risk reward, you, you know exactly what you're doing. And it looks to me, unless it gaps down because of follow up bad news this could just worm its way up to the to the um, uh, I'd say one it's a 170 49 170 180 to 172 60 kind of that area says hmm now I'm in a different thing altogether I'm trying to I don't know if it'll fall the gap that's a huge gap but I'm trying to get into the gap all right got that going um, okay now I had a question could I do it if I can find where I wrote it um, Oh, yes. So here we go. ExxonMobil. ExxonMobil uh, is making lower lows and lower highs. It got to a peak D just under 124 um, in April. Let me see if I can give you the exact number. Here it is. It went to 123.75. I remember looking for round numbers here, and I thought, you know, I don't think I'm going to see round numbers in these multinational uh, oils. They just very steady buying. There's nothing hysterical here. It did go to a, a most recent yearly high. It was really important at that 123 level. CVX had that sudden spike to the upside. This is that one that uh, it's a pattern that we look at quite often where it looks like it's pulling back. All the technicals are fading. And then there's a sudden move up. Usually it's a rogue wave with one big move. This had a very steady CVX Chevron goes from the low in the 154 area goes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine green candles all the way to a recovery a recovery high, not a multi-year high, but that's, uh, yeah, but yeah, actually a multi-year high. 187.21 was the high back in, I think it was about November of 2022. And here we are on the 20th of April. It goes to uh, 167.11. 
Uh, I'm looking at this and saying, yeah, 167.11 slides all the way down to the 156 area, has a big spike, and now it's trading at 162. Look what happened when it had the big spike to the downside. The nine period moving average didn't go negative. And that just says there's, there's still internal support. And that's very good. So that was Chevron. Next thing we want to look at was the um, the big caps. And I can't even put in a, a down arrow yet on that daily chart. And you've got peak B, peak C, oops, yeah, D and E. And E, and here's your rectangle. This is the, another pattern that we always look at. This is the pattern that says this big rectangle could turn into a lopsided cup formation and get you back to where it was if you can identify the plumb line at the bottom, because it isn't the exact, well, it might be the exact plumb line. Let's just do this. So the exact plumb line would be from the high of that peak C minus right there to this low right here. All right, oops, change the, okay. That's the low of the week of the 19th of January at 139.62. No, it's too late. It's missed the opportunity. So here it is. That would have taken it to, if that was the exact plumb line, it would have taken it to, it, it missed it. It went to the 167s, it should have gone to the 170 area. It didn't do that. So it is a lopsided cup because it's taking its time, but it's walking the nine period moving. Yes, Chevron, make sure that if you're along 150, if it goes under, if it closes under 160, be careful. It could go right into that candle, it could even go down to the 155 area. But right now, it's 162.40, it's down 27 cents, it's doing nicely. On the upside, if it's able to close above that high of three days ago, which was 164.02, if it's able to close above that, it's going to make a small cup formation to get back to that high. So Exxon is holding very well, but it, it has been struggling sideways if you want to look at it that way. Uh, next question I had was... Okay, here we go. Amazon, Amazon trading. Uh, this is nice. This is a leg C to the upside, maybe a peak C, and so almost all the indexes have done this very same thing. So here's your A, here's your B. Whoops, what happened here? Did I miss something? That's an A, there's a B, and there's the C. Okay, and the previous high is 189.77. What did it go to yesterday? I love the way these things are. The markets are so fascinating. Look at this, 189.94. So it went to a higher high. Therefore, this is a peak C. And the weekly chart says F, or is that an instant restart? Well, look, you went to a lower low. So this has to be considered as a potential F right here for the for the moment, at least. I'm sorry, can't be an F. Yes. An F slash A. Imagine that in a weekly chart of Amazon, excellent action. Yeah, Amazon looks to me like it wants to go to the 192, 194 area over the next week or so. Okay, now let's see, was this gonna be a two click session that I got out of too early? Don't tell me, yes, look at that. Oh, we're in leg C now at a new recovery high. No, not yet a new recovery high. Uh, uh, 5218.00 was the high at 3.30 this morning early. And so far we've gone to uh, 5218, 5217.25. Wait, something doesn't make sense there. What did I just say? 5218.00. Okay, we're about to test that. Isn't that fascinating? All right, let's get back to the other story, which is I want you to talk to you about the bonds, TLT. Now, there's a pullback here as the yields are, are coming, uh, as the yields are going up. And you've got a peak C in the daily chart. Is this going to go to a D to allow yields to come down again? Well, you had this chapter wave inside track propellant zone. It's got to the nine period moving average. So far, the yields are saying we have enough strength to rally, but to have follow through to the upside, I would I would say it's time. You you, you you've got until Friday. I don't know if I'd make it later than Friday, maybe Monday at the latest, but you have to see the uh, TLT go above 91.24 to try to make a peak D. If it fails from here, a failure at a peak C says you can go to a lower low. So we're going to be watching this very closely. 
I don't uh, know. I don't really want to see the yields actually start to rally at this point. Yeah. All right, I'll be back. Dow's up 69, S&P up uh, 197. Be right back. Tigers, you've seen his show, you've learned from his webinars, and now it's time to trade side by side with him. Join Larry Pesavento for the second month of his new service, Live Trading Fridays. Hosted in the Tiger's Den trading room on Discord, Larry has analyzed a number of commodities and indices, placed profitable trades, and explained his method. Whether you're new to trading or are a seasoned market veteran, trading side by side with a titan like Larry Pesavento will only enhance your game. Utilizing Fibonacci retracements and ABCD structures, Larry provides decades of insight into when to place trades, when to exit, when to ignore, and so much more. Learning is doing. So if you're serious about learning technical analysis and becoming profitable in this uncertain market, Live Trading Fridays is a must-have tool in your arsenal. Live Trading Fridays occur every second and fourth Friday of the month, so trading events for this month are May 10th and 24th. If you're serious about trading, we'll see you there. TFNN, educating investors. Are you ready to take charge of your financial future? TFNN is your gateway to the world of trading and investing. Whether you're starting out or scaling up, TFNN empowers traders and investors of all skill levels with top-notch investing systems, strategies, and techniques. It's time to protect and grow your money with insight you can trust. Join us live Monday through Friday during market hours for exclusive content that moves with the markets. At TFNN, we bring the trading floor to you. Our seasoned hosts are here to answer your calls and questions live on the air. Check out the Tiger's Den for just $1 and follow us on YouTube and become part of our vibrant community. And remember, at TFNN, we're so confident in the value we provide that we offer a 30-day money-back guarantee on all new premium newsletter subscriptions and services. You have absolutely nothing to risk, so why wait? Tune in live to Tiger TV and transform your trading journey. Because when you know better, you invest better. Join us and experience the difference today. TFNN, educating investors. In the world of trading, only a few names stand out like Larry Pesavento. A pro's pro with over 50 years of experience, Larry has seen it all. A former Chicago Mercantile Exchange member, Larry has authored 10 books and trained over 1,000 traders with his unmatched expertise. Introducing Fibonacci 24-7, Larry Pesavento's daily trading service that turns the complexity of markets into opportunities. Published every Sunday, receive a comprehensive report packed with detailed commentary, charts, and videos that illuminate the patterns shaping the markets with updates throughout the week exclusively for subscribers. Whether through charts or videos, Larry's analysis is your roadmap to navigating the markets. You can sign up now at TFNN.com for just $97. And with all TFNN newsletters backed by a 30-day money-back guarantee, you have nothing to risk. For all the details, visit TFNN.com. You'll find Fibonacci 24-7 right under the newsletters tab. Don't forget, you can listen to TFNN live on your mobile device 24 hours per day. Go to TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. That's TFNN.com, then hit Watch Tiger TV. Uh, Rochelle mentioned the den VST. VST going to an all-time high. I wouldn't just say all-time high. I mean, this is the, this is the perfect rocket ship. Look at that monthly chart. Unbelievable. I mean, just green, green one tiny little uh, unchanged, almost red candle in the monthly chart since 2022. This is incredible. Going from the 21s to the 89s, almost in a straight line up. Amazing. Would it, where would I consider it to be uh, consolidating? Uh, at this point, it's still acting extremely well. All the technicals are fabulous. And is this a brand new leg hey, to the upside? I don't know. All I can say is that uh, on a purely uh, extrapolating the data I'm looking at here, I suspect my rule of thumb used to be, we haven't seen that for a while, that stocks that get to um, the 92, 93 area invariably go to 105. They don't do it necessarily in a straight line, but this is what I've been looking at, is that Vista over a period of six next six weeks could really get very close to the 100 area, but it hasn't yet even reached 95. So we'll see. All right, so here we are summing it up. This is we're we're in a, a at least in the short term on the daily charts. This can only be considered a bull phase. And so far, look what's happened. The Dow has has regained its strength. 
even though it took a little bit of a breather, even the uh, IWM, which has been lagging, let me just go to the IWM right now, is coming back a little bit. But if it doesn't really get back to the 205 level by tomorrow, then I'm going to say, uh-oh, starting to stall again. That would be a great shame. But in the meantime, it is, it's holding very well. Let me just do this. I said to subscribers, if the market is, if the Dow is only a plus 20s or less, after 2 p.m., that says we're probably going to have some kind of a week, weekish close, just weekish close. But like this, this is, you know, buying just keeps coming in. So that just says that the Dow, let me just do this real quickly as we're going to go to the break and we'll go to Steve Rose and all the great. Hey, congratulations. Great to see you again, Tommy. Tommy's back. Uh, he came on for an interview at, at uh, 9.30 this morning with Jacob. He had a serious, serious problem, but he's, he's back and on fire. Well, that's great. So we're looking forward to seeing.